welcome to this module and in this module what we are looking at we are looking at the mechanical phenotyping of breast cancer and a method to demarcate between benign and cancerous uh, breast tissues. So, uh, here our understanding is that if we can design a piezoregist tube based micro cantilever then we can uh, probe the tissue and you can find the tissue properties that is mechanical properties. So, if you see the slide our idea is to design a piezoresistive micro cantilever with a SUA tip this is a piezoresistor piezoresistive micro cantilever the piezoresistor is here and the contact pairs are here right and this is the actual chip. So, if I show you the chip uh, I have brought with me I will just show it in a while. Uh, you can see the contact pairs that we are talking about this is cantilever contact pairs that we are talking about is this one this is the chip. So, this is what we are showing you in this one hmm. let me just. So, this is a magnified version of this cantilever hmm. this we cannot even uh, is not shown here. So, as you can see is extremely tiny structure right it's extremely tiny structure. Now, if I have the cantilever and I have the breast tissue then I want to press this breast tissue. So, now we understand if you can uh, see what I am showing it to you here in my hand yeah. So, this is a cantilever let us say this my hand is a cantilever right let me show it to you like this this hand, hand is a cantilever and I am growing a SUA tip based cantilever like this all right. So, this is the SUA tip this is the cantilever hmm. I want to press a tissue which is let us say this one. Now, for this since my cantilever is at the top right and there is a piezo resistor embedded onto this cantilever onto this cantilever if I want to press the tissue I had to reverse it down like this correct this cantilever is like this the elect SU8 is here piezo resistors are here if I want to press the tissue I had to reverse it down and then I take a tissue and I poke the tissue like this right. When I poke the tissue if the tissue stiffness is higher right if tissue stiffness is higher my cantilever will bend more. If the tissue stiffness is less my cantilever will bend less. Now, this bending of the cantilever not, not like this bending I am talking about from, from the arm this bending hmm. and I press it how much I am bending like this. So, that change in that structure hmm. so if it is pressing and it is changing the structure then this stress and strain created in the piezoresistive area will change the resistance because when I am applying a pressure there is a stress created in that piezoresistive region because there is a piezoresistor embedded on to the micro cantilever and that is why we can see the change in resistance. That resistance change depends on how much uh, cantilever is bending and that bending of cantilever depends on the stiffness of the tissue right. So, I can understand by pressing by uh, uh, poking the tissue not exactly poking it is uh, more like uh, uh, pressing the tissue. Uh, or in another one we can also say indenting the tissue indenting the tissue uh, what is the stif tissue stiffness right. This again a uh, uh, work is published uh, it is from my lab on a chip paper which was published in 14, but the interesting part here is to understand how can we design the piezo resistive micro cantilever. Hmm. So, you need to focus so that you understand ok. So, be with me let us see this particular image this is the same chip which is shown right over here hmm. this is a fabricated one this is a schematic structure. So, what is there this is a contact pad the red one this one like you can say dark red blood red uh, is the piezo resistor embedded or integrated onto a silicon chip. So, how can we design this by diffusion by process called diffusion. Hmm. So, if the wafer that I am using is a n type wafer n type polysilicon 
and if I do diffusion or ion implantation, then I can diffuse the dopant in the given region and this will act as a resistor all right. At the tip there is a the tip is made up of SU8 hmm? this much is easy. Now, let us see the dimensions the dimension of the chip this is 4 millimeter this one is 7 millimeter. Uh, now, you cannot uh, because of the uh, schematic uh, you cannot see very clearly, but uh, this width this one if I say this is a width and this is length then width is about uh, 7 uh, 700 7000 microns which is close to 7 millimeter and uh, length is 4000 microns which is about 4 millimeter. Hmm? The contact pads are 1 mm by 1 mm or 1000 by 1000 the spacing between two contact pads this is the sensor pads okay. sensor pad, this we are talking the spacing between two contact pads is 2000 microns or 2 millimeter the spacing hmm? now piezo resistor ok. So, piezo resistor where the cantilever is released is about 30 microns all right the width of the piezo resistive layer. So, if I say this is my piezo resistor right like this the width is 10 microns and the spacing the spacing here is also 10 microns the width is 10 microns and spacing is also 10 microns all right. Next one the thickness of the cantilever this thickness is about 2 microns just 2 microns. Now, uh, we are talking about really minute structure because the uh, human hair is about 80 to 100 micrometers in thickness 80 to 100 micron in thickness is a human hair all right. We are talking about 2 micrometer thickness of the cantilever hmm? this SU8 tip the radius is 5. So, diameter would be 10 okay. and the height of this is close to 30 micrometer all right. The length of the piezo resistor is 130 microns can see this is 100 micron. So, if I use this then this is one thirty micrometers all right. Now, this area and this area that we see are this contact pads and this one the piezo resistor contact pads all right. Now, the length and width. So, this one and this one. Now, it is a, a cross section image. So, you cannot see uh, exact dimensions, but it is 100 microns by 100 microns you see 100 by 100. Okay. Okay. So, this is what uh, is the schematic of piezo resistive micro cantilever. Here if you see then there is a silicon nitride on silicon on insulator this SOI stands for silicon on insulator hmm? that is what SOI stands for. So, silicon nitride is deposited on SOI wafer and here you can see SU8 tip here you can see cantilever is released oxide surface of SOI wafer you can see piezo resistor you can see and silicon nitride edge by for releasing cantilever you can see this particular things in this schematic. Okay. Now, let us understand how can we fabricate this particular piezo resistive micro cantilever. Right. So, 
since now you know what are the process flow and how the fabrication is done, I am not going to teach you in detail each and every step, but you just follow it here. Hmm? It, this is good enough for understanding the uh, entire process for fabricating a piezo resistive micro cantilever. Okay? So, let us see the process flow. Now, we will start with a silicon on insulator wafer SOI substrate. As you can see here, let us see this uh, color color bars is silicon nitride, green is SiO2, then gray is silicon, uh, orange or you can say uh, a gold color actually, golden color is for gold, uh, yellow color is for boron resistor, uh, uh, orange color is for boron contact and we have a blue color, light blue color for uh, cross linked. SU8 okay. and of course, the purple color for silicon nitride. So, it is now easy if you uh, understand this process flow. The first step is we take a SOI substrate which is right over here. The top is silicon, the center one green color is your insulator which is SiO2 and the bottom one is your silicon which is in gray color. That is why silicon on insulator is your SOI. Hmm. Now, what is the thickness of the silicon? the thickness of this silicon layer is 2 microns right. Why we have selected this thickness? Because we want our cantilever to be of 2 micrometer thickness. Hmm? So, this is the thickness of our silicon. The next step is the next step is you grow silicon dioxide you grow silicon dioxide using thermal oxidation thermal oxidation right the next step let us see next step next step is that you have to create a window you have to create a window right to dope to dope the boron resistor this is a cross section okay so, when I say window for uh, boron resistor, what does that mean? You see this schematic, we will open this region where I am drawing only this region, okay? not this one, not this, not this, hmm? only the one that I have drawn. Okay? Let me use some other color, so you can, you can uh, see what I am drawing. see only this region this much. Hmm? So, that is what is a cross section shown uh, here all right. So, what we are doing first we are opening the contact window or as uh, uh, opening the window for diffusing the boron resistor right. So, how can we open this window? So, we can use what we can use? We can use photolithography, right. If I have, I will just show you quickly. If I have oxidized silicon wafer, right, this is my oxide, this is my oxide, this is silicon. this is my SiO2 again, but this is already available on the wafer because it is a SOI wafer. This is my SiO2, this is my SiO2 and this is my silicon right. This is the structure. What I want to op what I want to do? I want to open the region such that I can diffuse my boron resistor this one. Hmm. For that I will spin coat photo resist positive photo resist, then I will do soft bake at 90 degree, then I will load the mask right. So, it is a cross section. So, I can just show you uh, let us say like this hmm. and this region will be sorry it will be a dark field mask, it will be a dark field mask. Why? because the 
region which I want to use for diffusing my resistor, I want to etch silicon dioxide from that particular region and to etch silicon dioxide from that region, I have to save other area except this area. So, now if I use if I if I do lithography or if I expose the wafer with UV, UV light what will happen? The, the unexposed region the unexposed region would be stronger and the exposed region would be weaker. So, after UV lithography if I dip the wafer in photoresist I will have I will have my photoresist which is re here right. Yes, I have to use this one. So, I will have my photoresist only here and here and you can see that now I can see SiO2 be, be through the photoresist because photoresist has been developed with the help of photoresist developer. Since this area has, has photoresist and this area does not have photoresist if I dip this wafer after hard baking then what will happen the silicon dioxide that is exposed will get etched from this region that means like this right. How can I etch uh, silicon dioxide by BHF. Now, I will dip, dip this wafer in acetone. If I dip the wafer in acetone, what will happen? The photoresist will get etched, right? And this will give me this will give me this structure. This is a schematic. You got it? <coughs> Easy. Hmm? Now, what I have? I next next layer is silicon. So, if I open the window such that if this is the top wafer if I op I am opening the windows like this let me draw two lines like this. Hmm. So, I for opening this window I can use this particular process once the windows are open everywhere there is silicon dioxide except through windows I can access silicon. So, now the if the next step if I diffuse the wafer with boron right with boron then what will I have? I will have boron only in this particular region. When you do when you perform the diffusion, there will be a borosilicate glass, and that borosilicate glass you can etch with the help of BHF, the help of buffer hydrofluoric acid. Hmm. So, after this, once I diffuse my boron, right, then what is the next step? Let us see. So, until now, I hope it is easy for you to understand, right. Uh, it is little bit uh, uh, difficult problem, but I am going little bit slow so that you do not miss the uh, important steps. First one was SiO, uh, SOI, second one is SiO2 by thermal oxidation, third one is opening the window for piezo resistor uh, to diffuse, then we have boron diffusion right. After boron diffusion I will again grow a silicon dioxide, this time I will grow silicon dioxide. Okay. So, in the E this schematic we are growing silicon dioxide on both sides of the wafer. Next step is to open the contact area of the piezo resistor. That means, if you remember in the last step in the last uh, process step we open this region right, we open this region. Now, in this process step we will open this region such that it will overlap the previous region, but remaining there everything is covered with silicon dioxide. 
Okay, remaining is always the silicon dioxide. Only, only the contact pads would be open. This area would be open. Hmm. So for this one and this one, we are showing you right over here in F. All right. The next step is to diffuse boron contact. To diffuse boron contact, you can see here there's a diffusion of boron contact. Right. After this, what's the next step? Once you have contact, what you will do? You have to take the contact for sensors, right? So this this one. Let me draw it here, so it becomes easier for you to follow. I'll I'll need this contact, and this one, right? So I will now deposit gold on this. So if I have this particular wafer, I'll deposit gold everywhere. Then do my lithography, and I protect. I finally edge the gold from all the area except this area, and this area is the cross section of this particular chip. So you can see we can see only a gold contact pad from the piezo resistor. So now I can measure the resistance with the help of this gold contact pads. Okay. Next step. Next step is I'll deposit silicon nitride. I'll deposit silicon nitride everywhere, and etch silicon nitride from the gold contact pairs and from two more regions here and here. Right. Next step is I have to deposit silicon nitride everywhere. This is silicon nitride, S I three and four, and I'll do lithography such that I reach to the next step, which is shown as I. Hmm. So, in this step, what we'll do? We'll open the, uh, we'll remove the silicon nitride from this region and two more region here and here. The advantage of silicon nitride is that it will relieve the stress that is there in the wafer because of silicon dioxide. Hmm. If you read in detail how silicon nitride helps to release the stress, that is. Uh, uh, that happens due to the deposition of silicon dioxide, then you will understand the phenomenon. But right now, we know that if I deposit silicon nitride as a uh, layer here, then it will release the stress. Next step once I create the window, once I create the window, I will etch silicon dioxide, I will etch silicon dioxide, and then I will etch silicon. So, if you see. I am etching silicon dioxide and silicon in J in this process, right? Silicon dioxide is etched, silicon is etched. Next step is I will deposit SU8 everywhere and pattern the SU8 tip. We have seen yesterday how SU8 tip can be fabricated uh, in when we were discussing about the electronic. Uh, uh, module or you can say the biochip uh, using MEMS based technology, uh, we have seen how can we fabricate or pattern SU8 for SU8 to act as a pillars. In this case, the SU8 is used as a tip and the thickness is about 30 micrometers, the thickness is close to 30 micrometers. Actually, uh, there are two different uh, chips here. What you can see is not 30 micrometer, but about 10 micrometers. Okay. The another chip that I fabricated, uh, the thickness was 30 micrometer. Here, uh, we have thickness of 10 micrometer. So, if uh, previously if I have shown it to you that this is 2 micrometer and this is 50 micrometer or 30 micrometer, uh, you understand that this is not 30 or 50, it is 10 micrometer. All right. So as your tip is done, next step is next step is I will open the contact from the back side of the silicon wafer. You can see I have etched silicon nitride, then I have etched silicon dioxide, and I can access the silicon. 
right. Next step is I will go for DRIE deep reactive ion etching DRIE will etch the silicon from the back side it will stop wherever silicon dioxide is there because silicon dioxide sorry because silicon dioxide X as a mask silicon dioxide X as a mask mask that means that silicon agent cannot etch silicon dioxide. Now, this is a very crude statement silicon dioxide gets etched, but the rate of etching is extremely le uh, less compared to silicon hmm, compared to silicon. So, that is why we say that silicon dioxide will act as a mask when you etch silicon and here when you etch silicon using DRI it will stop at silicon dioxide layer. Further, you can etch silicon dioxide with the help of uh, uh, BHF, and then you can just st uh, you can just uh, realize the uh, chip uh, after that process. Okay, so let us quickly see what we have uh, done in the process flow for fabricating piezoresistive micro cantilever. Okay, so the first step here is SOI. Second step is thermal oxidation on both sides. Third step is opening the window for boron diffusion. Fourth step is diffusing boron resistor. Fifth step is growing thermal oxidation on both sides. Sixth step is opening window for boron contact. Seventh step is you deposit uh, or uh, the boron contact and pattern it. Next step is gold for contact. Uh, piezo resistor contact. Next step is deposit silicon nitride and open the window uh, and also open the window from the gold contact. Next step is etch silicon dioxide and silicon so that we can see silicon dioxide. Next step is you uh, spin coat SU8 and pattern the SU8 to form SU8 tip which is about 10 microns. Next step is you uh, create the window from the back side of the wafer uh, and then etch silicon uh, uh, etch the silicon nitride and silicon dioxide and the final step is you etch the back side of the wafer uh, using DRI to realize your piezo resistive micro cantilever right guys uh, it, it may look little bit difficult but when you concentrate and you understand the uh, photolithography process you will see that it is not so difficult it is not so difficult Okay. So, once you have the piezo resistive micro cantilever, how can you use the piezo resistive micro cantilever for understanding the stiff tissue stiffness. So, this is the front view of the experimental setup where you can uh, see that we can place the tissue right, it is a tissue micro array, it is on the glass slide. You can have tissues like this where you can see here. And then what we are doing? We are using a micro manipulator MP285 at the edge uh, uh, to which there is a XY stage, and here there is a uh, piezo resistive micro cantilever at edge. You can see here, right? A uh, piezo resistive micro cantilever. Uh, these are inverted microscopes, that is why you can see an eyepiece. That is a help us to uh, understand which region we are uh, indenting. And um, then there is an objective lens, of course, because the inverted microscope, there is a CCD camera and a light source. So, TMA stands for tissue micro array, the array of tissues, like I have shown in the glass slide, like here, like this schematic, the glass slide on which there is a t, uh, TMA, and these are HNE images, uh, HNE stain images of the tissue micro array, which is shown here. Uh, when you press the uh, tissue, then there will be change in the piezo register and that changes we can measure with the help of electronic module. So, if the uh, you can see the slides here is a uh, tensor epithelial region is denoted by C E, benign epithelial is B E, uh, benign stromal is B S right. So, uh, 
uh, we have noted different things. So, benign epithelial, benign stromal, cancer epithelial, cancer stromal right and these are 8 different patients on which we have uh, the tissue is extracted from 8 different patients and uh, uh, we can see the green color boxes are cancer epithelial, the red color boxes are benign epithelial and blue color boxes are stromal uh, region of interest. Uh, Again, uh, if I reiterate, it is an HNE stained tissue microarray images. All right. So, this is the experimental uh, setup of how to indent the tissue to understand the change in the visual material. Here, you can see a oxidized wafer with lot of visual microarrays. When I say lot, how many of those are there? If you see 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 into 3 is 24. About 24, 24 visual resistive microarray levers you can fabricate on a 4 inch silicon wafer. Hmm. Wafer is SOI okay. and you can clearly see the difference uh, when you use the uh, silicon nitride, silicon nitride for relieving stress and when you do not use it, when you do not use it you have the cantilever which is bent because of the stress, when you use it you get a clean uh, cantilever uh, released from the SOI wafer or using the SOI wafer. Right? There is a SUA tip you can see it completely release cantilever, completely release cantilever, but there is a stress there are copiaristic contact pads. Here what you see is uh, cantilever with a piezoelectric register, here the length is 140 microns, uh, the total length of the cantilever in this case is 260 microns, again SUA tip piezoelectric contact. This is when we are actually taking the measurement from the tissue, we are understanding the tissue property and you are pressing the tissue with the help of SUA tip. Again when I, uh, I, I, I explained you earlier that when you press the tissue depending on, on the tissue stiffness the piezoelectric resistor will bend, uh, the, the cantilever will bend and the piezoelectric resistor will change the resistance and that resistance we will capture with the help of electronic module and when you do that you will see that the, uh, we can understand the change in the stiffness of the tissue. So, now if you go to F, this F1 is that you have SEM image, you have HNE image and when you zoom it you will see uh, the FESEM image of the breast tissue course right. As we uh, as I have told you about 200 nanometer of silicon nitride can uh, act as a stress compensation layer that was we have used and finally, uh, uh, using this piezoelectric cantilever uh, we can understand the change in the tissue property particularly when cancer progresses from normal to benign to DCIS to IDC all right. So, in the next uh, uh, module I will show it to you how can we get different uh, or how we can uh, how we are able to obtain different results uh, using the piezoresistive microventilever and how can we demarcate between the tissues uh, whether they are normal or they are in the cancerous region right. Till then you take care I will see you in the next module.